Hey, it's Nick here from Grayscale Gorilla, and in today's tutorial, I wanted to show you how I set up color gradients in Cinema 4D and Redshift so that they go through any object that you're working on. I find myself doing this technique all the time, and I figured I'd share it with you guys today. All right, with that, let's head on into Cinema 4D and let's get started. All right, here we are in Cinema 4D and Redshift, and I'm bumping into a problem that I have all the time, and I wanted to flip on the camera and just show you guys how I approach it and how I try to solve it. So first, let me show you what I'm talking about. Uh, in this case, I'm gonna drag in this red material onto this helix. This helix, by the way, is just one of our models here in Plus. And a lot of times I'll drag material on and go, man, I really love the look of it. Uh, it has all this nice little detail, but I want to control not only the color, but what if I put a gradient through this object so that maybe the tip here is red and then it gets the green and then it gets to white at the end. How do you approach it? How do you set this up? Not just in a basic material, but in any material, including any inside of Grayscale Gorilla Plus. Well, here is a way to do it. There's always a many different ways to do things in Cinema 4D, but here's how I start to tackle it. First thing you wanna do is double click on the material, open it up. Now, in this case, we're gonna use the original shader graph, but this works in the new graph as well. And the first thing you wanna do is go find a ramp. And you're gonna drag this out and you're going to uh, actually drag two ramps out. Because the first thing we wanna do is make the original material black and white. So this diffuse texture, if we open it up, you see the red is baked in. And so we wanna suck out all the original color that's in here and replace it with the color that we want. So first of all, we need to crank this into our uh, node, into our ramp node and put it in the input. And we're also gonna need a layer, color layer shader. Let's drag that out into our scene and let's drag the out color of our ramp from our texture into layer one. And let's drag the out color of our first ramp into the base layer. And then we have to replace this texture with the new one just by dragging down into the diffuse color. And now we have um, our new setup. So what does this give us? Well, by default, it gives us a gray version of that material. And if we zoom in here, let me show you some of the detail. It keeps all of the nice little details and scratches from this material, but now it's gray. Okay, so what can we do now that we have control over the color? Well, first thing we could do is go into this ramp and if you make, uh, if you just remove one of these nodes and set this to any color, uh, let's call it this ugly green, then go into the ramp, go into your color layer, go to, to blend mode and set this to overlay. Now we get all the original detail and texture with this ugly color. Now, this is way too ugly, way too bright. I'm gonna tone it down just so we could see all the detail. But now you can see we have this nice blue color, but all the original texture is still here. Um, and in this case, uh, I don't want it to just be one color. I want it to be a whole full rainbow of colors. So let's go into these load preset here in our gradient. And if you're a Plus member, you have access to all of these gradients in the extra downloads area. We even have these gradients here. If you are not a Plus member, uh, Cinema 4D ships with all of these gradients that you could use. I'm gonna use one of my favorite color combos, which is this one right here. Now, once you click it, uh, you're gonna see, well, it doesn't do anything. What happened to this whole gradient? Well, go into the ramp, and once you select the ramp, go to this area here that says mapping and set it to horizontal. Now this will change depending on your object and how it's mapped and how the UVs are set up, but try different ones, vertical, horizontal, diagonal. Uh, I like the horizontal one does almost everything it needs to do in this scene, except for a couple things. One is, is that this tip is the wrong color. This should be red, but it's all the way down here in this kind of darker blue purple color. And so we need to fix that. And overall, the whole thing is just a little bit dark. You can see over here, there's this bright yellow, but it's really not bright yellow. Even if we go till later in the scene where it's rotating around, uh, let's see if we can't get that in frame. It's still not as bright yellow as that. So how do we fix this? Well, let's go into our ramp. And first of all, you can just 
take the white point of this uh, ramp that's coming from the texture and move it to the left until things brighten up. You could see now we're getting a more saturated, brighter color. And this could be the opposite way. It could be too dark. And that in that case, you wanna move this this way. Um, either way, you're gonna have some options. The other thing to keep in mind is in your color layer, if overlay is just not working with your scene, uh, I'd recommend you try multiply or also screen uh, as some of the other options to try. In this case, multiply just by turning up the ramp a little bit brighter looks pretty good. Okay, now let's fix this uh, tip here. Well, why is the gradient working except for right here? Well, that's because of the UVs. And uh, all of our doodads, in fact, all of our models here at, in our Grayscale Gorilla Plus library are UV'd, they're ready to go. Uh, but sometimes you'll run into these issues where the caps will be on the same side of the UV. So how do you fix this? Well, um, let's open up our UV edit and let's make sure we have our helix selected. And let's take a look at what this is. So you can see that our UVs are going from the le uh, left all the way to the right. And this is our whole snake moving around. In fact, if you grab uh, this paintbrush tool here and go to the polygon mode and just select some some lines here You'll see that it's going from top or from bottom all the way up to the top in this area and th this is the uh, Main part of the snake, but these caps is where the problems are in fact over here is where everything is nice and purple blue and every over here is where everything is nice and red from this gradient so all we have to do is move this cap over to the side, okay? So, and this is how you do it. You just click and select and get the whole thing. I'm gonna zoom in using our my two key. And all you do is paint all the uh, polygons you wanna move, grab your move tool, and then move it off to the side. Now I could zoom out, I could grab this thing and move it all the way over to where it's on the red side. So now our gradient is going from bottom where it has the bottom cap all the way up through the snake and then to the right. Things get different as there's more complex objects. Of course, very complex objects will have all these different pieces and UVs, but this tends to work for simple shapes and uh, you know basics as you're setting up MoGraph. So if you want to learn more about UVs, of course, we have other tutorials and um, there's much more complexity here, but I did wanna show you how to set this up in a basic way. The point is, now that we go, uh, now that, now when we move back into our original uh, redshift mode and hit render, that cap is now gonna be correctly colored. And the bottom cap, if we take a look at it, should be just fine, because that was already on the proper side of the gradient. So let's fix one more thing before we go, and that is these lines in our gradient. I want them to go away, and I just want this nice kind of rainbow gradient to go through. So how did we fix that? Well, let's double click on our red plastic and open it up. And in this case, I'm gonna go to our original ramp and I'm gonna right click on this ramp and say interpolation of all knots, smooth. And as soon as I do that, it's going to get rid of those hard lines and now interpolate between all of the colors in my gradient. And this works uh, no matter what gradient you use, obviously, just make sure you click that uh, button and you should be all set to go. All right, now that we got the gradient all set up, I did wanna show you how we made the final render and the thumbnail and other parts of this tutorial that you may have been seeing um, because it's quite a bit different from this final render. And I don't wanna leave you hanging, so let me show you. Um, here, right here, we just deleted the cylinder, although that does look cool. We don't need it for this little trick. All we need to do now is clone this spiral a bunch of times and make them random. Uh, so you may have seen me do this quite a few times along the years. You go ahead and hit Shift-C, you type cloner, and hit Enter. And uh, I'm just gonna put this null right in the cloner. You could just drag just the spiral as well if you want. Uh, you can see now if we zoom out that we're gonna get a bunch of clones of this, um, of this uh, spiral. Now, in the cloner, I don't wanna set this to grid mode. I wanna use honeycomb mode so that they're spaced out a little bit better. Uh, and by default, the spacing is really big. So I'm gonna shrink this down to like 20 by 20. And uh, holy moly, now we're a little tight, but that's okay. 
Uh, let's turn on multi-instance so this uh, reacts much faster. And uh, let's space these apart a little bit more. There we go. All right, now we're talking, folks. Okay, so we got our uh, spirals, but they're all facing the same direction. And uh, they are all animating still, 360 degrees. So this will be a perfect loop when we get done. The next thing we need to do is go into our cloner and randomize the um, rotation of some of these clones. So go ahead and select your cloner, hit Shift C and type in random. This is gonna get you the random effector. If you hit enter or double click on it, it'll add it to the scene. And if you had your cloner selected, it will add it to the cloner and it will affect all the clones. So we don't want this random effector to affect any position. So let's go to parameter, turn off position, turn on rotation, and uh, let's just crank this uh, rotation up in all axis. I didn't crank um, the, the P and the B here. Um, I only cranked the, uh, the heading so that they're not flipping upside down. Uh, and this is all just personal taste on how I wanted it to look. Um, now I wanna go into my cloner and space these out even more. I want a little bit more spacing and uh, no touching. And uh, now if we zoom out, we got this fun um, pattern here with all the clones. It is a little dark for this look, um, especially if we crank the background. So I think for the final render, we ended up with like a yellow background. Uh, you could do that right here in the dome light, or you could do this, uh, just render out in alpha and uh, do this in post and after effects or something. But if you wanna do it live, you could just go to your uh, dome light that we set up, grab the color picker, and uh, I'm just gonna pick this yellow here. And uh, that part of the yellow is too dark, so I'm just gonna crank it up. And even that is a little bit too orange. I'm just gonna pull it a little bit toward yellow. And now we have the problem where everything's a little bit too dark, a little too contrasty for this vibe. So let's go ahead and grab another dome light. There's other ways to do this, but I just, let's pile on the dome lights, folks. Even by default, look at that, with that background looks, looks good. I do like the yellow background, so we just have to come down here and say no background but it did fill in a lot of the shadows. Look at it without it, very dark, and with it, boom. I also think with this look, the um, HDRI is a little bit too off to the side. So we can grab our original dome light that has the HDR, and if you're using this uh, Creative Office uh, HDRI, you just rotate it around so it's facing the front a little bit, and that will brighten things up. In fact, it's a little too much. Let's uh, tone down our fill light here just by turning down the exposure. And now we're just dialing this in. This looks pretty close. Some of these might get a little too close to touching. I don't want that to happen, no touching. Um, so all, uh, you know, from here, you're just moving this around, spacing them apart. All right, now I need this on a, a Hawaiian shirt. Somebody figure that out. All right, that's it. If you have any questions or anything didn't work in this tutorial, please let me know down below. I love hearing from you guys, and I always appreciate when you leave a comment. Thanks again for watching, everybody. And don't forget, we have a ton of other videos here on YouTube all about how to use Redshift. So consider subscribing if you're new to our YouTube channel. And with that, I hope to see you in another tutorial really soon. Bye, everyone.